job in that respect. They pumped out a lot more oil than was going to be pumped out when I called them about four weeks ago. And if you look at oil four weeks ago, it was at 82, 83, and it was going up to 100 a barrel. That would have doubled your prices and even tripled your prices at the car for gasoline. And instead, you have very low gas prices all over the country. That's because of what I did, and Saudi Arabia helped us. But very importantly, they're investing billions of dollars. They're buying their equipment from us. And remember this, they don't have to buy it from us. They can buy it from Russia, and they can buy it from China. They make very good equipment. They don't make as good equipment as we make. Nobody does. Nobody even close. But they make very good equipment. So they can spend that money in Russia and China and other places, and that is not acceptable. So the CIA, Mr. President, concluded with confidence that the They didn't conclude. No, no, Josh, they didn't conclude. I'm sorry. Do you, they, do you, wait, do you wait. think they did not? Josh, no, they didn't conclude. They did not come to a conclusion. Uh, they have feelings certain ways, but they didn't I have the report. What were and you can ask, you can ask Mike, they have not concluded. Nobody's concluded. I don't know if anyone's going to be able to conclude that the Crown Prince did it. But uh, I will say this, I, I don't know. I don't know. But whether he did or whether he didn't, uh, he denies it vehemently. His father denies it, the King, vehemently. Uh, the CIA doesn't say they did it. They do point out certain things, and in pointing out those things, you can conclude that maybe he did or maybe he didn't. But there's no, that was a, another part of the false reporting, because a lot of you said yesterday that they said he did it. Well, they didn't say that. They said he might have done it. That's a big difference. But they're vehemently denying it, and we have hundreds of thousands of jobs. Does, do people really want me to give up hundreds of thousands of jobs? And frankly, if we went by this standard, we wouldn't be able to have anybody as an ally, because look at what happens all over the world. But then you could also take a look at Iran, take a look at Syria, where, you know, millions of people have been just slaughtered horribly, horribly. You take a look at what's going on in Iran and the vicious the vicious situation that's taking place there and the number of people that are being killed and slaughtered. You take a look all over the world. We're not going to be able to deal with Let's not deal with anybody. The fact is that Saudi Arabia is tremendously helpful in the Middle East. If we didn't have Saudi Arabia, we wouldn't have a big base. We wouldn't have any reason, probably. I mean, if you look at Israel, Israel would be in big trouble without Saudi Arabia. So what does that mean? Israel's going to leave? You want Israel to leave? We have a very strong ally in Saudi Arabia. We have an ally that said they did not commit at the top level, the crown prince, the king. They did not commit this atrocity. And it's an atrocity. It's a terrible thing. I dislike it more than you do. But the fact is, uh, they've been a very strong ally. They create tremendous wealth. They commit really tremendous number of jobs in their purchases. And very importantly, they keep the oil price down. If you want to see a global depression, all you have to do is lift the oil price $50 a barrel, which could happen very quickly once we lose that relationship. So I hate the crime. I hate what's done. I hate the cover-up. Uh, and I will tell you this, the Crown Prince hates it more than I do. And they have vehemently denied it. The CIA points it both ways. It's, you know, it's, and I, as I said, Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but I will say very strongly that it's a very important ally. And if we go by a certain standard, we won't be able to have allies with almost any country. Okay? Who should be held accountable? Uh, maybe the world should be held accountable, because the world is a vicious place. The world is a very, very vicious place. You look at what's happening in China, and you look at what's happening in so many different countries. I could name many countries. You look at what's happening with terrorism all over the world. That's the other thing with Saudi Arabia. They really are. They're, they're putting up tremendous amounts of money to actually fight terrorism. Now, they were a part of terrorism, and nobody's going to try and justify that. They were a big part of it. But they are spending a lot of money, and they're opening up, and they're doing a lot of things that are very good. They're really opening up that country for a lot of good. You know, until this happened, there were a lot of people saying a lot of good things about the Crown Prince. So he strongly denies it. He vehemently denies it. And uh, my policy is very simple. America first. Keep America great again. 
And that's what I'm doing, and we're doing better than anybody thought even possible. Yes, ma'am. Sir, you've been talking to the troops. I'm wondering if to you who? the troops today. Yes. I'm wondering if you can tell us at, at what point do you want to withdraw troops from Afghanistan? Well, we're always looking to do the right thing, and we'll be seeing over a period of time. But we're looking. You know, I just spoke to Afghanistan, as you know. Uh, we're always looking to do whatever is right. We're in very strong negotiations in Afghanistan right now, which a lot of people don't know about. This may be the first, but we are in very, very strong negotiation uh, in Afghanistan. We'll see what happens. If something happens, that would be a great thing. I'd be very happy about that. I really think the people of Afghanistan also, and they are good fighters, and they fought for a long time. They fought for a lot longer than we fought. They've been fighting for many, many, many decades. But I think they're tired of fighting. And we'll see what happens. But we are talking about peace. And we'll see if that happens. Negotiations with? We have negotiations going on. I don't know that they're going to be successful. Maybe they're not. Probably they're not. Who knows? Yo tako staro jeszcze muszę łapatować. Płakać mi się chce. Całą la, całe lato drabloj, a całą zimę łapatę w gości trzymuj. Czajno łapatować. Tak. Jeszcze nam kazują chłodniki łatki dować, się k*** wykształciły za nas pieniądze, a teraz jeszcze nam starym dziadom kazują chłodniki łatki dować, zamiast łoni mają tu robić. Idzie straż miejską. Mandat! Mandat! Speaking to some of the folks just now in different parts of the world, and they're so proud of the job they're doing. And you gotta have borders. If you don't have borders, you don't have a country. I mean, the Democrats want open borders, and they want these people coming in. Many of those people are criminals, okay? And have been so adjudged. We know who they are. They have records. They have some very substantial criminal records, some very bad criminal records. They're in the caravan. You saw what happened in uh, Tijuana, where a number of the people said, these are tough people. They start fighting. They're starting fistfights. They have fistfights all over the streets. They're starting fistfights. They said, these are not like normal, innocent people. These are people, you talk to them, and they start a fistfight. I don't want that in this country. Okay? Mr. President, what, what about uh, the idea that the military may uh, use legal force against these uh, migrants? They have to. They're going to use lethal force. I'd, I've given the okay. Yeah, they have to. I hope they don't have to. But, you know, you're dealing with a minimum of 500 serious criminals. So I'm not going to let the military be taken advantage of. I have no choice. Do I want that to happen? Absolutely not. But you're dealing with rough people. You ask the people in Tijuana, Mexico, they opened up with wide arms. Just come in, come in, let me, let me help you, let us take care of you. And within two days, now they're going crazy to get them out. They want them out. Because things are happening. Bad, bad things are happening in Tijuana. And again, it's not in this country, because we've closed it up. I actually, two days ago, we closed the border. We actually just closed it. We say nobody's coming in, because it was out of control. But you take a look at Tijuana, Mexico, and you see what's happening there. It's really a bad situation. What do you mean you closed the border and nobody's coming? 
if we find that it's uncontrollable, Josh, if we find that it's um, — it gets to a level where we are going to lose control or where people are going to start getting hurt, we will close entry into the country for a period of time until we can get it under control. The entire border? The whole border. I mean the whole border. And Mexico will not be able to sell their cars into the United States, where they make so many cars at great benefit to them. Not a great benefit to us, by the way. But at least now we have a good new trade deal with Mexico and with Canada. But we will close the border. And that, that means that Mexico is not going to be able to sell their cars into the United States until it's open. But we're going to either have a border or we're not. And when they lose control of the border on the Mexico side, we just close the border. And we have a very powerful border. We built a very strong border in a very short period of time. And the military has been fantastic. The job they've done — and by the way, Border Patrol and ICE, all of the law enforcement we have involved, and we have local law enforcement, too, they have done an incredible job. And they've wanted this for years. You know, I'm the first president that's done it to this extent, but they've wanted this for years. And some of the presidents, I guess they didn't care or they wanted open borders. I don't think they wanted open borders, because most of them, if you go back to 2006, they all approved essentially a wall, a very powerful fence, which is pretty much the same thing. But in 2006, if you look uh, Obama, uh, you look at Hillary Clinton, you look at uh, Schumer, all of the people that are standing up protesting, they think it's good for them politically. See, I think it's very bad for them politically. I think the fact that they're weak on the border is very, very bad for them politically. But, you know, I've only been a politician for three years, so maybe they know better than me. Could happen, yeah, over border security. Uh, the wall is just a part of border security, a very important part, probably the most important part. But uh, could there be a shutdown? There certainly could. And it will be about border security, of which the wall is a part. Do you think Secretary Nielsen is doing a good enough job? Well, she's in there trying, I'll tell you. It's a tough job. I mean, yesterday she gets a ruling that uh, things that we were doing, a judge that knows nothing about it decided to take law enforcement into his own hands, and he gives a ridiculous ruling. So we'll appeal it. But it makes the job harder. We're still doing the job perfectly. But it makes the job harder, and it makes the job more dangerous. Because a judge made a ruling that was shocking. Okay? Just to be clear, going back to the idea of shutting down the border, what would it take for you to reach that step? You want to do that? Well, I've already shut it down. I've already shut it down for short periods. Are you talking about that one border? No, no. Yeah. I've already shut down parts of the border because it was out of control with the rioting on the other side in Mexico. And I just said, shut it down. What does that look like in practice? What? What does that look like in practice to shut down the border? You see it. I mean, it took place two days ago. Did you have to sign an order? Is there any yeah, I, they called me up, and I signed an order. Can we get a copy of that? Oh, uh, you don't need it, don't worry. It's not that big a deal, but maybe to some people it is. What we want to do is we want to have a strong border. We want to have people come into our country. I want to have a lot of people come in. We need them. But they have to come in through merit, and they have to come in legally. They have to come in legally. You know, we have a lot of people, millions of people, that have been waiting in line for years to become citizens of our country. Great people. They went through a whole process. And then these people come in, and they think they're just going to walk in, and it's a, it's a very unfair thing to all of the people that have been waiting on line, in some cases for many years. because They've done it right, but they don't think they've done it right, because they say, well, how can we do it right? And we go through this very complicated legal process, and they have lawyers and everything else, and then you have people rushing through the border, and they're supposed to stay. It's not happening with me. We've been very tough on the border. I mean, the problem that we have is that I've created and helped create a country that's doing better than it's ever done economically, so a lot of people are coming up here, because their countries are not doing well, and perhaps for a reason. But whatever that reason is, their countries are not doing well. Okay, a couple of more. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. How prepared are you for this meeting with President Xi? How are you preparing for it, and how confident are you? I'm there? very prepared. I've been preparing for it all my life. You know, it's not like, oh, gee, I'm going to sit down and study. I know every ingredient. I know every stat. I know it better than anybody knows it. And my gut has always been right. And we're doing very well. And I will tell you, China very much wants to make a deal. China has been taking advantage of the United States for many, many years. Uh, they have taken out four, five, and six hundred billion dollars a year. That doesn't include the theft of intellectual property, which has been horrible, what they've been doing. And uh, 
You know, it's not a question of preparing. I think I prepared for this meeting. I had I had a meeting literally right in that corner with President Xi. We have a great relationship. I like him a lot. I think he likes me. He probably likes me less now than he did before we did what we're doing. But uh, we picked up trillions of dollars in value, and China has lost trillions of dollars in value since I'm President. Trillions, many trillions of value. And we've picked up many trillions of dollars in value. And we are a true economic power, far greater than we were before I became president. We are an economic power that is far greater than we were. When, I, when we were, when I took over, we were teetering. We were in bad shape. We were going down to minus four, minus five, minus six percent in GDP. Instead, last quarter we hit 4.2 percent. And we are uh, we are doing very well. I can say this: China wants to make a deal very badly. Do you think it's going to happen? Because of the year? tariffs. Because right now, on 250 billion dollars, they'll be paying as of January 1st 25 percent. And in many cases, they're already paying 25 percent. On the rest that they're not, they're paying 10. But the 10 percent goes to 25 percent on January 1st. And so they're going to be paying a tremendous uh, amount of money which, frankly, is great for our country. We're taking in billions of dollars from China. We never took in 10 cents from China. They took everything from us. We never took anything from them. Now, as of uh, already, we're taking in — right now, we're taking in billions. China is — people don't understand this. China is right now paying us — right now — paying us billions of dollars a month. That's never happened before. And soon, they're going to be paying us many, many billions of dollars a month. But China wants to make a deal. If we can make a deal, we will. Are you worried about Matt Whitaker's finances and his potential happiness? No, Matt Whitaker is a highly respected person. And, you know, once I choose somebody, they always go through uh, hell. But Matt Whit Whitaker is a highly respected man. Uh, the Justice Department respects him tremendously. I've spoken to a lot of people. And, you know, the press has been nasty to Matt Whitaker, but I can tell you that he is a highly respected, strong person, and he, he's doing a great job. Everybody tells me that. He's doing a really great job. Have you done any emails for President to try to bring Julian Assange back to the United States? No, I haven't been asked to, no. Would you want him to face charges here? Do you think I don't know anything about it. I'm not very familiar with the whole situation. But uh, I would say that uh, if somebody made a request, I guess it's something we consider. I just don't know very much about that situation. Okay? What else? Anything else? Are you interviewing people this week for um, new jobs in your administration? Yeah, uh, we'll have a few. I'm very happy with my cabinet and people that work for me and for us, where we work for the country. We have a great cabinet. We have absolute stars. Um, but a few of them, I would say, can do very well outside. Everyone's doing well when they leave. That's one thing I'll tell you. Everyone that leaves the Trump administration has come out really well. I'm very proud of a lot of them. Look at Hope. Hope Hicks is doing a fantastic job. She uh, she's a fantastic young woman, and uh, I'm very proud of her. Look where, look how she's doing. She's become a very important person in the outside world. And we have many such people where they work here for a year and a half or for a period of time, and they go outside and they do really well. Many of them. So, and that's what I want. I want to see. There's always a lot of change. Um, yeah, I'll probably be changing a couple. Maybe a few, but very little. Overall, we're very happy. Are you talking interviews this week for that? Yeah, I'm doing interviews this week. I'll do interviews as, as we say in the Southern White House. People like doing interviews here. What job are you interviewing for, Mr. President? Well, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. But uh, you you'll be now, safe. Right? I know. <laughs> Maybe I will. Have you talked to Ivanka about her email? Yeah, I, I have, actually. And uh, very innocent, a short period of time, very early on. There was no uh, uh, deletion of emails like the 33,000 plus probably another 100,000 that Hillary Clinton did after she got a subpoena. Uh, there was no uh, bleach bit. There was no anything, just innocent emails. There were no classified emails. A much different deal. It's another fake news story. And she did transition out. She was a private person, and then ultimately she transitioned out from private to government. Uh, and I believe all of her records are in the historical society, the historical records, uh, much different than the other situation that I've talked about for a long time. But she transitioned out. But everything's in historical records. 
Uh, I'll see you over at the Coast Guard. I'm going over to the, say hello to the Coast Guard right now, which I look forward to. I'll see you. I don't know if you're going, but if you are, I'll see you there. Thank you all very much. What are you most thankful for, Mr. Burns?